Environment, diet, behavior, and other factors can significantly influence our lives, even in the development of a fetus. This was starkly demonstrated during the Dutch Famine, a period of extreme hardship that lasted from November 1944 to the end of the spring of 1945. The German occupation led to a food embargo, and the Dutch resorted to burning furniture to keep warm and eating grass and tulip bulbs to survive on a daily calorie intake of only 50% of the average amount. Tragically, 22,000 people died of hunger during this six-month famine. However, the Netherlands' infrastructure of health services and medical record-keeping allowed epidemiologists to conduct a groundbreaking study monitoring the long-term effects of the famine. This study has yielded significant and valuable findings that continue to shape our understanding of human development, underscoring the profound impact of environmental factors on our genetic makeup. If a mother was well-nourished during and after conception, but undernourished during the final months of pregnancy, there was a chance that the newborn would be born small. On the other hand, if the mother had poor nutrition in the first trimester of pregnancy, but proper nutrition for the remaining months, the baby would most likely be born with an average weight. We all know that embryos gain weight in the last months of pregnancy. Epidemiologists who followed babies born during the Dutch famine for many decades found surprising evidence. Babies born small usually remained small for the rest of their lives and hardly became obese. No matter how much they ate, their bodies never overcame that period of malnutrition in the last months of their mother's pregnancy. Children born to mothers who were malnourished in the first trimester had high rates of obesity and other health problems later in life. These facts show that malnutrition during the first three months of embryo development affects a person for the rest of their life and raises enigmatic questions about how these effects are passed on to subsequent generations. The examples mentioned are linked to a fundamental biological phenomenon called epigenetics. Epigenetics is a new branch of biology that is revolutionizing the field by allowing us to understand how modifications are made to our genetic material. Epigenetics refers to a change that occurs beyond the genetic code. It is not just a new branch of biology, it's a revolution. In the past, biology was defined by key figures and their discoveries. Darwin and Mendel defined the 19th century as the age of evolution and genetics, and James Watson and Francis Crick determined the 20th century as the age of DNA and functional perception. Now, with epigenetics, we are at a turning point in time. We are beginning to unravel the thread that connects nature with the evolution of life, as well as the way in which the environment speaks to us and, in some cases, changes us decisively. We are currently in an exciting era for biology as we delve deeper into the mysteries of our genetic code.